everyone. Welcome to Serving Up Plumbing with David Butler. Today, we're going to be talking about primary backflow preventers. But before we do that, please hit that subscribe button, give it a thumbs up if you like this video, and let me know what you'd like to see in the future. All right, now, let's talk about backflow. What is backflow, and why do we have to prevent it, right? Well, the backflow we're talking about is in potable water. What's potable water? Potable water is drinking water, water that is good for culinary purposes, clean, fresh water, something that's not contaminated, right? So there's potable water, non-potable water. We want to make sure we keep the potable water away from the non-potable. So how do we do that? With backflow preventers. Now, there's a lot of different backflow preventers. There's air gaps, there's pressure vacuum breakers, there's check valves, there is the RPZ, which is a reduced pressure zone principle backflow preventer. Boy, that's a mouthful, right? And there's a double check. What we're gonna be talking about today are the primary ones, and that is gonna be the double check assembly and the RPZ valve, the reduced pressure zone principle backflow preventer. The RPZ is the highest level of mechanical backflow protection that you can get. The double check is just a level below that. It is not considered a high hazard protection device. So. Where do we put these? Why do we put them in? All of those sort of things. Let's talk about it. First, let's talk about the double check. The double check is used less than the RPZ. Most of the time, the only place you're gonna find a double check valve is on a sprinkler system. What's it look like? This is what the double check looks like. You'll also see it in the pictures that we're gonna be showing. This has a check valve right here and one right here. That way it has two check valves it's also what we call a testable device. These ports right here are a way that we can test and make sure these check valves are working because lots of things can happen. You can get a broken water main, trash can get in the system, a plumber may have to come out and work on the house. There can be a piece of grass, a piece of gravel, a piece of dirt, anything, a tiny rock. And if it gets stuck inside this, it's not gonna work anymore. And now we have no more backflow protection. Well, why do we need backflow protection on a sprinkler system? Well, think about it a minute. We have sprinkler heads at ground level, in the dirt, right? Anything that is on the surface gets wet when you run the sprinklers. That water can puddle around those sprinkler heads. We have lots of things in our yards that we don't want to be drinking, right? We have pesticides we put down. We have fertilizer we put down. We have dogs and cats and other animals that use our yards as a bathroom, right? Well, we don't want any of this getting back into our drinking water. So what do we have to do? We have to use a backflow protector. All lawn sprinkler systems are required to have backflow protection. Now, the majority of the cities allow double check assemblies, although by the letter of the code and the law, they are really not acceptable devices for that. They are not high hazard devices. And I think you'll agree with me, pesticides, cat and dog poop, Fertilizers, these things to me are high hazard. I don't know about you, but I think those are high hazard. So they allow the double check in a lot of cities. Now it is starting to happen that some of the cities, at least in the Dallas Fort Worth area, are starting to require the higher level of protection of the RPZ. Now I'm gonna go into more detail in that in a minute, but let's finish talking about double checks. So if you have to have an RPZ, there's a lot of differences that go in with that. But right now I wanted to make sure you understand all your lawn sprinkler systems are required to have at least a double check assembly on it, a testable device, and most cities now are starting to require that you do an annual test on them and send the report in to that city. If not, they may give you a notice that says, if we don't get your test results and you have a good double check, we're gonna shut your water down in 30 days. That can happen and I've seen it happen. So. The double check assembly prevents backflow from your lawn sprinklers. That means you're not drinking any contaminated water. It protects your water and it protects the city's water. Most importantly, nobody's gonna be drinking bad water. So that's what a double check assembly does. Now, where do we install the double check? The double check is generally installed somewhere in your yard service, either at the house or close to the water meter. Now, a lot of cities now are requiring that they be actually on your property. You'll see a big green box in your yard. In that box, there's usually a double check assembly if it's close to your water meter. That box has to have the double check assembly in it. It has to have clearance underneath the double check assembly. Some of the cities even require that you have a Y strainer at the beginning of 
the double check assembly to prevent any trash getting in it. That keeps it operating properly. You have to have gravel in that box too that's 12 inches deep and usually you want about three inches of clearance underneath that double check assembly buried in the ground. Now you can still bury a double check assembly but that's one of the problems that they have with it. You do have openings on this valve so these openings if they start failing and this box fills up with water now you've got something that contaminates your potable water. We don't want that to happen right? That's why we're getting away from double check assemblies. On your lawn sprinkler you've got the double check assembly out there by the street. What's an RPZ do? And where do we need it? Well, RPZs are required on all commercial buildings and they're tested annually. Either by the city they're tested or by an individual contractor and those results have to be sent to the city each year. Now they haven't started requiring them on all homes yet. I do believe in the future at some point all homes will be required to have RPZ valves to protect the water system of the city. So what is an RPZ valve? This is an RPZ valve. Now there are a lot of different types of RPZs as there are a lot of different types and brands of double checks. This just happens to be one. Now what makes an RPZ different from a double check? Actually, believe it or not, it is a double check. It just has one more in the middle. So you almost could call this a triple check. The only difference is this. We have a check valve right here. We have a check valve right here. And in the middle, we have that reduced pressure zone and it has a dump valve. Now that means this bottom right here can actually drip water out. So this dump valve cannot be below the ground. Therefore, this device has to be 12 inches above the ground to the bottom of this. It can be higher, but it can't be lower than 12 inches to this. Because if this happened to be underwater, we have another possibility for backflow or what we call a cross connection. So the RPZ, the highest level of contamination protection, is basically a triple check. When it, this check fails or this check fails, mainly this check, this will dump water, which dumps the contaminated water out here. That way you're protected. Where do we have to put RPZs? Well, RPZs, as I said, have to be on all commercial buildings. They have to be on any time you have a carbonation machine, believe it or not, for carbonators. They have to be on all plants, chemicals, everything like that. They also have to be on any time you install a water filtration system on most homes. Not all cities require that, but the majority of cities now, and that's because of the TCEQ, the Texas Commission for Environmental Quality. Now, the TCEQ is who governs the water departments, the environmental issues, and that's why we have the backflow protectors under the TCEQ. They are not the plumbing code as much as the TCEQ, which is a whole different code than the International Plumbing Code. We have these backflow protectors to protect our water systems. What's called the water purveyor, and that's who's ever providing you water. Your city, your county, whatever it is, that's your water purveyor. They are under the control of the TCEQ, and that's where the backflow preventers come into play. If you have a water filtration system, you're gonna have to have a RPZ in most cities. If you have a brine tank water softener because of the salt and the things that go on there, you're gonna to have to have an RPZ on your home. Where do you put them? They can go under a rock in the front yard as long as you have this 12 inches above the ground. They can go in the garage if you're installing it in the garage or if you have a main shutoff coming into the house in the garage, you can have it there. You may have to have an RPZ in the house on your house water and you might have to have a double check on your lawn sprinkler out in the yard. Some cities are now requiring that you have an RPZ on the entire line coming to your house. Therefore, you would have to put it under a fake rock or something of that nature out by your water meter in the city right away or right on your property from that area. Usually it's gonna be close to the curb or just in the inside of your sidewalk towards your house. There's one other place now out in the county that is requiring RPZs. If you have an aerobic system for your septic system. You're not connected to city sewer, but you have an aerobic system. You are now required to have an RPZ valve on your main water line coming in because the aerobic systems, even though they have treated water sometimes, they spray that water out on the ground. You may have a lawn sprinkler system out there in the same area that is getting sprayed down with sewage water that has been treated. That's not exactly potable water, is it? 
We wanna make sure none of that gets back into any of the county or city drinking waters. These are usually out in the country uh, on the fringes of the city limits. But if you have an aerobic or a septic system, you are now required to have an RPZ on your water system in your home. A lot of information, right? A lot of info about water quality, water protection, cross connections, potable water, non-potable water. Why is this government getting all up in our business on this and the TCEQ and everyone saying, you've got to do this to your water system and that? It's to protect our drinking water. At the bottom line, plumbers protect the health of the nation. And what do we have to do? We have to put systems in place, backflow protectors, to protect your drinking water and make sure we keep it safe. They even say that the quality of our drinking water is the primary thing that has increased our lifespan in the world today. The biggest problem third world countries have is having clean drinking water. So what do we have to make sure and do? We have to protect our drinking water at all costs. So backflow protectors, RPZs, double checks, protecting the health of the nation is what those are all about. And that's why we have to have backflow protectors. Wow, this video got serious today, didn't it? Well, I hope you understand how important it is for us to have clean drinking water. And I hope this video has helped you understand that. Give it a thumbs up if you like this video. Give me a comment on what you think about it. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thanks again for watching Serving Up Plumbing. Tell your friends the butler did it.